it's, it's a weird thing to describe, sort of the waking up, you feel like you would imagine that it'd be this shock and then someone tells you what's happened to you and it would just be this emotional thing and you've had a big crash, you've been hit by a car, you've broken your back and neck and you think, God, your world would like implode, but actually you kind of feel just emotionless about it, you're just blank. So I broke my neck, five vertebrae, my sternum, four ribs and shoulder. A punctured lung and a bruised kidney and a tear in my kidney and then some cuts and bruises and stuff. You know, you should be paralysed and, you know, to have both impacts and not die is just unbelievable. And then you think, okay, maybe I'm a bit luckier than I'm giving myself credit for. <laughs> Avoiding death is, oh, it's like a, double-edged knife kind of thing. It's one this, on one hand, there was this sort of elation when I first came out of hospital. I actually called my mum after my first ride and I said, this is absolutely amazing. I'm never going to be unhappy again because this is just, everything's beautiful. I thought I'd never see it again and I could have died. And, it's, and then actually it suddenly changes to this awareness of your own mortality. And this is a bit, like, a bit emotional and a bit deep, but I could die at any moment and it's almost crushing this weight of your own mortality and the awareness of it um, and then I, I then I did struggle with it I struggled with it a lot actually and then it kind of came good in the end um, and you kind of turn that into a positive that okay you could die at any moment it's a horrible thought but so let's make every moment the best it can be it does give you this finite reality of it that okay so why am I waiting to make changes why am I waiting to back myself why am I waiting to push forward in my own life and actually think no I'm going to go somewhere where I think I can make the best of myself as an individual and make the best of a team. Yeah, my was like why do you have to do rise? I was like I keep bloody falling. This season yeah it feels like a sort of a blank slate it feels like okay we can start again in the dark moments following something like that, you do think you're never gonna be back at that level. And you think, God, if I can't even ride for one hour, then how am I ever gonna be at a level where I can ride, even ride for three hours, let alone race for four hours, four and a half hours. But I kind of, the progression I made after the crash, I kind of had a little bit more faith in myself. And most teams go, oh, she didn't race, she damaged goods kind of thing. With track drops, it's definitely what you see is what you get. And straight away from the first time I spoke with this team, I knew that they believed I could come back as well. And then, you know, that gives you this massive lift that actually, okay, we can succeed and we can do something great. And it's not, it's not sort of like a lost year. It's like a year that didn't go to plan, but let's use that. Trek Drops for me was attractive, the way they approach the racing. It's kind of, they give it everything. This year they, that's now evolved, got bigger riders, and now the goals have also grown with the team. I'm, you know, I'm taking a bit of a road captain role and I want to do that well and I want to, I want to see them progress and yeah, the whole team grow. Being on the start line um, in Australia is going to be, it's going to be a weird mix of feelings for me, I think. We're all racers, we're not just bike riders and I feel like I've been a bike rider this year and actually I'm just a bit bored of riding my bike, I want to race my bike again. Suddenly you miss that feeling of the competitiveness and you actually miss the nerves, you miss the stress. Suddenly you've got a very bland life. Every day you get up and ride your bike and it's lovely, but really that feeling of like anticipation and the build up to it and then on the start line with your teammates and you're just a, you're a part of something. The start line this year I'm most looking forward to definitely our Dens week. Um, I feel like the racing suits me, I feel like the racing suits the team. I think we have good teams for all of them. I'd like to get some good results in the women's tour and then we have a great team for touring in and I'm there as a domestique and I want to be just as fit for that so I can help my teammates. So. We all want to be successful and we all want to achieve. Bob, the owner of the team, puts your own happiness and your own sort of well-being and mental health and your own enjoyment of the sport in line with success. The happier you are as riders and the better that you gel as riders and the, the better feeling you have, the greater you'll perform. Trek Drops is a place where they believe that one day I can win these races. You know, maybe this year the goal's top tens, maybe it's top fives, maybe it's the victory. We've set a goal and we can actually do this.
You can either be the martyr in it and it be this story of like, oh, this rider who maybe could have been, but then I think, actually, no, can it not be this success story of sort of like, you know, rising from the ashes of this massive, like, tragedy that actually I never thought would happen to me. And it will show people, okay, well, you can have setbacks, you can come back from that and you can come back stronger.